had many questions, when do we start the quilt as you go part? The quilt as you go will be done in sections instead of block by block. Right now we're working on sections one through four. After that, we'll start on section five, which is the center medallion of the quilt, and will be about the size of a large wall hanging. After that comes six and seven, which really give you a break because they're really easy. And then sections eight and nine finish it off with rows of four inch squares that look like Spanish tiles. So to recap, section one, two, three, and four, then section five, six and seven follow with eight and nine coming in last. The only thing left to do after that will be putting on the binding. And so, without further ado, let's move on to block number two. Here's another good tip for you. Just like we used to do back in the days when we made clothing, there was always green lines marked on the pattern pieces. Now we're going to mark some lines, but they're not necessarily grain lines they're going to be direction lines. So I'm going to put my ruler down so I can hit as many spots as possible. Right now I'm getting three of them all in a row. Now I'm going to put little arrows at the top. That indicates to me that that's the top of the block. Now I'll move over and get a couple more. So now I got three more blocks I can mark. Again, put the arrow tops on it so you know that's pointing to the top of the block. And we'll catch the last two blocks and do the same thing. Now you'll know how to lay your fabric whenever you're ready to stitch. As you're cutting out Beth's block for the templates, you have to exercise a little more caution than you had on other blocks. For example, if I came straight down this line to cut, I'd go right through eight that's sitting on the corner. So I'd want to cut eight out first so that wouldn't happen. Then I could cut these ones and it would be fine. Now when I'm ready to cut this, you can see I would go right into four. So I would be better off going ahead and let's cut four out first so that we don't accidentally slice through that when we do this line. When you're laying out your templates on your actual foundation piece to assign the colors, remember to turn the foundation piece upside down so that the pieces will fit the way they're supposed to. And then go ahead and lay them out, match them where they're supposed to go. If you have elected to use letters on your assigning your fabric sheets, then go ahead and do that if that makes it easier for you. And then this is how we're going to mark your template pieces. Now I have my blocks all marked in accordance with the, the assigning fabric chart using letters versus numbers. Maybe this will make it happier for you. If you're trying to figure out how wide to cut a strip to cut your pieces from, lay your piece on your cutting mat and try to lay it so it takes the, the least amount of width. So if I put it this way, it would take a lot more than if I put it this way. Now I'm going to put this down on a line and I'm going to move this over to a line. So if I look at that, I've got two inches by one, two, three, and about a half. So I know that I need to cut a strip wide enough to accommodate this. So if I have two inches here, remember we have to add a half inch on both sides. So that needs, means that we need a three inch 
strip. That would be three, as my grandson would say. When cutting your fabric pieces, don't forget about those scraps left over from block one. I was able to get four of this piece out of the scraps. Here's another tip. I always cut in layers of four, basically because I'm lazy. But I can put this piece down knowing that when I cut, I'll get four pieces. I need 16, so I'll be one, two, three, four times four will give me my 16 pieces. Now here's another tip. Remember those directional arrows we put on our pieces? Well, let's say you're working with a stripe. By placing the arrow in the direction of your stripe or other directional print, you'll be sure that you get the pleasing results you're after. Now, not to scare you or anything, but you're about to embark on one of the hardest parts of working with paper piecing, and that's scaling triangles. Triangles that have three sides, but are uneven. So we're going to show you a way to take those fears away by using the directional arrows that we marked on our template pieces and following those precisely. Also with careful trimming and the laying of our fabric on our foundation piece, we'll have this mastered. So first, I have my foundation piece upside down and I'm going to place piece one on top. This is something else you were having problems with. Piece one always goes right side up, but it's still wrong side against the foundation piece. That's what we need on piece one. We'll flip it over and we can see that it's totally covered. Now you know you're on the right side to stitch when you can read the block name very clearly. If you see it backwards, that means you're backwards and you better stop and flip things around before you end up with a block that's not going to be right. Now while we're at it, you can see that we're really into segment two's area on piece one. So rather than have a lot of trimming to do after we stitch that, let's go ahead now and move piece one so that it extends into segment two about a quarter of an inch. Again, no quilt police. We're eyeballing it and that'll be just fine. Now we're ready to place piece two for segment two on our foundation piece. Again, paying attention to our orientation. We want to make sure that when we place this piece in its proper place, it's oriented in the right direction. We want to make sure the raw edges are even. I've more than extended past the finished block side here, and I'm more than a quarter of an inch into this segment. That lets me know that I don't run short for that segment that I'm stitching now. So we're going to flip it over and we'll begin to stitch. Trimming after stitching seems to be another problem area. Let's cover that now. What we need to do is press our fabric pieces. And notice we have a quarter of an inch seam here already, so we don't have to worry about trimming between one and two. And we'll flip piece two over, press it down so it's nice and flat, and then we'll begin our trimming. It's very important that you do press these seams 
flat that will give you the the best trimming possible so don't skip that part so now we're ready to trim and we have a strange piece number one it's got a strange shape so the first thing we need to do is to put our cardstock against an adjoining stitching line carefully fold back your foundation piece using your add a quarter ruler place that up against the cardstock and trim don't forget to put your ruler down first if you trim without the ruler you'll be cutting your pieces right off your foundation piece again this is a almost like a triangular shape so we have several sections that we need to trim so we're going to fold back that area using our add a quarter we'll trim that section away working around piece one we have a little triangular piece here at the bottom so let's also trim that coming up the other side we'll be able to trim not only piece one but also the extra from piece two all at the same time so using the add a quarter ruler let's trim along that edge and you notice how it slid for me the ruler that's the beauty of these rulers that it just slides along that cardstock okay moving on to piece three again let's look at the orientation and you always want to make sure your your letter is right side up so that you know that you really are looking at the top so I took this out of the stack it was like this these are all right side up so I want to make sure that when I put my right sides together I'm keeping this part going towards the top just like the orientation shows you can see I'm more than a quarter of an inch in here and I'm more than past this the finished stitching line on the outside so now we can flip this over and we can stitch Now if we look at that, because we have our raw edges together, we know we have a quarter of an inch seam allowance on that side. So now we're going to flip it over and we're going to press it and trim on the other sides of that. Now if we look on the back side, we just did piece three, which is right here this section right here you can see how far we've extended there so let's go ahead and trim that and we're going to do that by placing it down placing the cover stock or card stock against what would be another stitching line So we can print, trim that seam down to a quarter of an inch. Since this is mostly repeat for you, I have sped up the following clips. On piece three, and we're Looking at the orientation, we can see that that corner is supposed to go in that corner. Let's flip it over, right sides together. See, it does go in the corner when you flip it. And let's make sure that we're really 
going to cover this. So here's a tip if you're not sure. After you've placed your pieces together, place a pin along the stitching line. Just like this. Now flip that piece over against the pins. And if you look at from the back side, you can see that you have indeed covered that section. That's a real good habit to get into if you're not sure. If you're sure that that is indeed going to cover, there's another little tip. If you look at your pattern fabric piece, do you see how it's wider right here? That should generally always be opposite the wider part of your segment that you're covering. That's another good hint that you're going to be okay whenever you flip that fabric. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this piece, just like we always do. We're going to flip it over. We have a quarter inch seam there. Now when we flip it this way, we know that we'll have to trim the other side. So let's go to the pressing station, press that block, make sure it's nice and flat, and we're going to turn our board over, get our cardstock and put it against the stitching line, pull back our foundation piece, put our adder quarter ruler down, and trim. And now, just that easy, we're ready for the next piece. Ah, except we do need one other place. We need to trim down here by this little triangle. We can't forget about that, even though it's just a little piece. It's still important it needs to be trimmed. Now, as far as that edge, we don't need to worry. We'll get it later. On to block five. We're going to go ahead and make sure, again, that our orientation is the way it should be. We've got the fattest part of the segment opposite the fattest part of our fabric. We're going to put our raw edges together. We're going to make sure we extend well into the seam line and we're going to stitch. our raw edges together knowing that was a quarter inch seam allowance we don't have to trim there we'll press the rest of the block making sure our fabrics are laying nice and flat and proceed to do the rest of the trimming so let's take our cardstock Fold the foundation piece back against on the stitching line, add a quarter ruler, and trim. Again, we don't have to worry about that other part. We'll get that in our final trimming. Ready for block six already. So we're going to look at the orientation, and we're going to make sure which end is at the top. We're going to Place our fabric right sides together, making sure that we extend well into the seam lines on both ends, and stitch. Because this is a corner, all we have to do is press it down. No need for trimming. We're ready for piece seven. We've got the bigger sides opposite. We're making sure that we're into our seam line on both sides and we're going to go ahead and stitch that. We're now going to press section 7 so that we get a nice flat seam and we're going to also have to attend to the little extra down here at the bottom because we still have to put piece eight 
to finish it up. So let's do a little trimming. So we've got our cardstock against the stitching line for piece eight. We're going to put our add a quarter ruler down and trim so that we can place our final piece. Now we're ready for piece eight. We're going to put our raw edges together as we always do. And we're stitching in that last piece. And there you go. Let's give that a final press. And then we're going to trim up all the edges along the lines using a quarter of an inch outside of the dark lines to make sure you're getting a quarter inch seam allowance. After you're done with that, that quarter of your star block will be completed and only three more to go to finish the star. Congratulations, you have a new block. Just like before, when we did our first block, we are now going to join this together, these four sections, into one star block. The thing that you need to do on this particular block is to make sure the points right here for this center square match up. We want to make sure that these points match up as well as the corners. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're putting our pieces right sides together on the side with that center corner block. We want to feel, and you can do it with your fingertips, when those edges of that block meet together. And just to double check, we're going to do the pin thing again. Just put a pin straight down through, and you should meet up on the other side. And I didn't, so let's do it again. Straight down in. And now you can see that I'll be good as far as matching that square goes. So let's put a pin in place. The next place we need to match up is right here where this joint comes together. And we're going to do the same thing. You can sort of see it from the side. You can actually feel it better with your nails. And you can guarantee it by taking your pin, putting it straight down through. and making sure it comes up on the other side exactly in this place you want it to be. And we'll pin that together. We'll do the same thing with the other two and then we'll be ready to stitch. And we'll do that chain piece piecing stitching just like we did before. And now we're ready to begin our, our stitching. Remember, we're going to start a couple stitches into the block, just like we did on the barber block. We're going to stitch forward a few stitches. We're going to back up off the block entirely, and then we'll keep going. Now, I want to point something out to you as far as the pins go. While you shouldn't stitch over the pins, you do want to get as close to the pin as you can before you remove it. That prevents the fabric from having space to scooch on you. So the pins are actually doing their job. So when we approach this coming pin, we're going to stop right there and then take the pin out and continue. Now we're going to stitch our next block. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a few stitches in, backtrack a little bit, 
Get as close to that pin as we can before we take it out. Continue on. Get as close to the second pin as we can. Take it out and then continue. And let's backtrack here as well. Now, if we've done our job correctly, we should have a perfectly matched points right here and a perfectly matched square down here on both pieces. So we're going to separate these, take a look at this one, and again, we're matched here, we're matched here, let's go press. To start out by finger pressing our seams open as much as we can on both sections. And sometimes you have to coax them just a little bit. It's often easier to grab the seams at a connection point with another color because it gives us our fingers a little something to hold on to. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and press these seams flat, just like we did on our previous block. Once again, we're using firm pressure down. We are not ironing. We're pressing to make sure the seams stay open. And then I like to repeat from the front side. Doesn't that look good? Perfectly matched points. Gotta love when that happens. Okay, I've already finger pressed this block down. So let's go ahead and press that. And again from the front. And now all we have to do is join these two together to make our star block. And again, we want to make sure that we're matching in the same places we matched when we did our quarter blocks. So I've gone ahead and pinned those, matching the same points that we did before, here and in the corners of the center square, and again at this boomerang type shape. So everything should match up just like it did for our two quarters that we put together. So let's go ahead and stitch this. Again we're going to start stitching on the block. Take a couple back stitches until you go off the block and then forward. Keep the pins in place until you're right there so that your fabrics don't have any room to move. You know, that is the main reason for why we pin, to keep the fabrics from moving. So if you take the pins out too soon, make sure your seams are open on both the top and the bottom. If you take the pins out too soon, then you're defeating the purpose of the pins. So again, we're going to get real close to that pin. Stop. Take it out. Real close to the next pin. Take it out and then off the edge. Again, we want to backtrack when we get here. That makes sure that our block is very secure. So if we open this up, we have a perfectly matched square in the middle and on all points. So let's go ahead and press this out. So I've already finger pressed the seam open, and now I'm ready to press. And you want to give it a real firm press in the center because you have a lot of fabric coming together at one point. And then let's go out to the end.
and let's flip it over to the other side and again we want to get a nice firm press to that center and remember it's a lot bulkier now because we have stabilizer in there it'll become less so once that stabilizer is removed so don't panic about that and now ladies and gentlemen we have our finished Beth block.